Hello friends, welcome back to another video from Shomu's Biology. In this video, we are going to talk about Golgi apparatus structure and function. We have older videos about Golgi apparatus structure and function. But this new video about the Golgi apparatus structure and function will unfold many important concepts of Golgi body structure, uh, how Golgi bodies are formed, what are the constituents of Golgi bodies and Golgi complex and functions of Golgi bodies in details. And also, I'll definitely make sure that you'll get something unique. You'll get to know about something new about Golgi bodies in this video lecture. Okay, so let's begin to talk about the Golgi body structure and function. Let me take a color first here. And the very first thing is what is Golgi? What is Golgi apparatus? If I ask you in very simple terms, what is Golgi apparatus? What would you say? Golgi apparatus can be explained in different, either Golgi apparatus, Golgi complex or Golgi bodies, doesn't matter. It can be explained like it's, it's, it's a, what can say a cooking center for a uh, for for a cell or a post office for a cell where uh, after the proteins are synthesized they are made in the endoplasmic reticulum they are transferred and they are modified chemically and then they are dispatched in different locations of the inside the cell and outside of the cell so a secretory so golgi apparatus is a center of secretory pathway inside a inside of a cell that's one way to take uh, a look into the golgi apparatus so also known as golgi complex golgi bodies or golgi membrane bound organelles which are sac like structures found in the cytoplasm of most eukaryotic cells and absent in prokaryotic cell mammalian rbcs and sperm cells of bryophytes and from this sentence itself i can ask you a question which of the following uh, does not contain a, 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 a golgi apparatus and you can see it's absent in prokaryotes obviously everybody knows that but it's absent in mammalian rbcs sperm cells of bryophytes okay that's it ranges from one to several within a cell in plant cells several small golgi complex are together they are known as dichotosomes so in dichotosomes the multiple golgi bodies are found together it is responsible for transporting modifying and packaging proteins into lipid into vesicles so basically once the proteins are synthesized in the cell, lipids are synthesized in the cell, they are packaged, they are labeled, they are modified, they are destined to deliver in different locations and they are delivered, they are dispatched by the Golgi apparatus. So, in a, in a much uh, better way, we can explain Golgi apparatus is like a post office. Once uh, the you know letters and all the cargoes are there, present, they are tagged, they are tagged with different uh, formula that they, I mean, they are tagged with different addresses. Once they are tagged with addresses, they are dispatched to their distant locations. So, components of Golgi apparatus, it is made up of several stack of parallel flattened sac which are known as cisterni. So, basically what the Golgi apparatus is made up with, many peripheral tubules and vesicles are also present. So, basically Golgi apparatus is made with three different components. Okay, let me write them down. Three different components. One is cisterni, cisterni, second one vesicle and third one what tubule these are the three component of a golgi apparatus okay and if you look at this picture it contains few of them not all of them but this is how it looks like a 2d model cross section model top view and you can see there are there are the structures okay stack large stacks are there okay large stacks you can see several stacks of parallel flattened cisterns so these are cisterni these are all cisterni okay the stacks are known as cisterni these are small bulges coming out of the cisterni they are known as vesicles okay and there will be tubules which i'll show you later on in a different image right after that so what you can clearly see is that these are newly forming vesicle okay and these are late forming vesicle so there's a journey of this vesicle of how the golgi apparatus is formed the journey begin from cis phase cis phase and the journey ends in the trans phase so cis phase have incoming transport vesicle they join together make cisterni and the cisterni get matured okay into the later stage of trans phase and the vesicles which are bulging out bulging out of this trans phase are known as secondary vesicles so the vesicles which are importing incoming are known as primary vesicles okay and the vesicles which are going out outgoing vesicles secondary vesicles okay in the trans phase Incoming vesicles, cis phase. Okay, this is a very simple understanding. Now let's look at the cisterni structure. Approximately four to eight cisterni are pre uh, present. Okay, usually they are equally spaced, and the Golgi complex has a distinct polarity. The two poles, one is cis, another is tra trans, is very important. Okay, 
forming cis face convex and trans face concave. See how do you recognize that cis face is convex and trans face is concave. Secretory material from smooth endoplasmic reticulum via transport vesicles reach Golgi complex. So basically as I mentioned it is a part of the delivery system, it is a part of the cargo delivery system and what we have here inside of a cell we have this nucleus okay? and this is endoplasmic reticulum we have then we have this Golgi apparatus like this Golgi apparatus. So the journey is from ER, let me change the color here from this ER to Golgi, Golgi to vesicle and vesicle to out of the cell or it can be destined to different organelle inside the cell let us say mitochondria and uh, chloroplast in case of plants and different organelles, nucleus and all. Okay. So cis phase is known as receiving side of Golgi apparatus, trans phase is known as shipping side of Golgi apparatus. Cis phase where all the vesicles are incoming, trans phase vesicles are outgoing. The vesicles in trans phase known as secondary vesicles, vesicles in cis phase primary vesicles. Clear? Let us move to the next. Next structure here tubules and vesicles. What are the tubules? You can see in this picture the tubules are visible. Tubules are small round form of the periphery of the cisterny. So basically if I draw the structure it will be more clear to, for you to understand. Let me draw. This is how the cisterny looks like. like and this like this like this okay okay and if i draw this is the end and let me take color so let me change the color again sorry okay so now i can tell you that this is cisterny we all know that the tubules are the structures which are present very close to cisterny kind of parallel there from the periphery of the cisterny, these are the periphery regions of the cisterny and these are known as the tubules, these are all tubules. So basically tubules are not, the tubules are uh, a version of the vesicles but which are very close to the periphery of the cisterny, they are known as tubules and when these vesicles are forming to the dispatching end or exactly to the incoming end here, dispatching end or incoming end, then we call them vesicle. These are red ones are vesicles. Okay, that is the difference. So, vesicles lie near the end and concave surface of the Golgi apparatus. Okay, while the tubules small round structures form the periphery of the system. That is the only difference. And then the type of vesicles that we get smooth vesicles and coated vesicles of Golgi. Two types of vesicles are there. Smooth, there is nothing present on the surface and coated vesicles. Now, Apart from that, the other structure is matrix, the center which is filled, fluid filled center, that center is the matrix where all the protein modifications, sorting, chemical tagging like phosphorylation, sumoylation, acetylation uh, and uh, hydro uh, like uh, what you can say, the uh, modification of carbohydrates and all those things will, will be carried out inside. That is also known as the lumen of cisterny, so this region, the lumen of cisterny which is also known as the matrix of Golgi apparatus. Okay. So, this is another image that you can see, it is not that clear but distinct regions are marked properly here. Okay. Now, modification in CGN and TGN. So, what is CGN? Cis Golgi network, TGN trans Golgi network. Okay. So, what you can see that there is a journey of vesicles from cis Golgi towards the trans Golgi, cis Golgi incoming end, primary vesicles, trans Golgi outgoing end, shipping end, secondary vesicles. Okay. So, cluster of fused vesicles migrates along microtubules and focus to the cell membrane delivered into the lumen of cis phase of cistern. You see, this is the structure. I am not going to read through all this. This is for you to read and write notes. But try to understand this concept cis medial trans and this whole structure of cis medial and trans is known as the Golgi network, cis Golgi network, medial Golgi network, trans Golgi network and there is there are different theories of how exactly Golgi body structures originate. So basically there are two theories 
uh, one is the cisternal maturation model so basically uh, the cistern is continue to mature in that model it was told that the cistern structures that we know uh, they begin from the cis, uh, network so when the vesicles start fusing to each other they start forming cistern so vesicles fuse to form cistern so this is the cistern in the cis site now then there is a cistern in the medial site and the cistern in the trans site now what's happening is that this is the dispatching end this is receivers end let me take the color and what happens actually from the trans golgi network the vesicles coming out from the cistern the vesicles bulge out from the cistern itself they bulge out from the cistern itself and then they go and fuse with the cell membrane so what's happening is that the trans golgi cistern size is decreasing and as the trans golgi is moving it's moving towards membrane as forming vesicles medial golgi medial cistern becomes trans cistern cis cistern becomes medial cistern and the cis cistern place is blank the vesicles the incoming vesicles will fuse with each other to form cis cistern so basically there is this constant cisternal maturation that we can see the incoming vesicles will form cis cis will mature to medial mid will mature to trans and trans will bulge out and go and fuse with the membrane that way it concludes uh, the overall structure ment uh, integrity maintenance in uh, the process of golgi body structure uh, formation that is known as cisternal maturation model okay now what are the functions of golgi complex and this is really important this is going to be very important the, the function of golgi complex it's too much secretion synthesis sulfation apoptosis phosphorylation and cell specific functions all of them are a part of it and particularly secretion is most important well mo many people say synthesis is also equally important and it also the sulfation is also equally important these three are the major three functions of golgi apparatus the very first thing secretion it is involved in many different function but secretion is one of the primary role as i mentioned and there are multiple ways of secretion there is a uh, constitutive secretion without any signal so golgi body doesn't require any signal from outside so there are basically proteins needed in cell different places different functions so proteins are made inside the cell they are packaged and the golgi tag them and they secrete it outside of the cell so that is known as a uh, general secretion model and there is also regulated secretion where a particular signaling molecule binds to the surface receptor of uh, the cell and as a result of which a cell signaling process take place inside a cell that tells the golgi apparatus to package sudden proteins and components into the vesicles and then they fuse it to the membrane to secrete that is known as regulated secretion second type is synthesis a major site for carbohydrate synthesis and also modification of that this includes the production of glycosaminoglycans remember what are gags glycosaminoglycans a long unbranched polysaccharide uh, which act as golgi attaches the protein synthesis of endoplasmic reticulum so basically the proteins once synthesized in the endoplasmic reticulum transported to the golgi and and here the the they produce this glycosaminoglycans uh, okay and enzymes in the golgi polymerize several of these gags via xylose link onto the core protein so basically what happens again a system of modification and that start with endoplasmic reticulum from er to golgi so basically proteins are synthesized here proteins synthesized okay and that protein is transported to the golgi and that protein is tagged with glycosaminoglycans multiple gags actually okay multiple gags and once that is done and then they are targeted okay they are targeted to different so so protein is targeted with uh, carbohydrate and they are producing this uh, glyco what we can call them glyco protein because the protein is tagged with uh, sugar moieties here sulfation is another kind of modification as you see the name golgi involves sulfation of certain molecules passing through its lumen via sulfur transferase enzyme that gain their sulfur molecule from a donor called paps okay so pap is a donor which is present in the golgi pap is present in the golgi and what it does is that it attaches sulfate group so sulfation is done for the uh, like the enzyme sulfur transfer is present and that modifies it, that modifies the protein okay certain molecules particularly protein here this process occurs on the gags of 
proteoglycans as well as on the core proteins so basically single protein can be modified or protein with glycosaminoglycan that we saw earlier they can also be modified with the same manner with the help of enzyme sulfotransferase the level of sulfation is very important to the proteoglycans signaling ability as well as giving the proteoglycan its overall negative charge so basically the proteoglycans where they are present they are mainly present in the extracellular matrix structures of a cell and extracellular matrix is very important region uh, for cell cell contact cell cell interaction and also cell contact mediated inhibition that uh, prevents a cell to become cancerous later so this proteoglycans are or proteo glycans they are generally negatively charged and their negative charge is actually due to the sulfation event by the sulfotransferase which is present here in the golgi apparatus and the pap is the donor for the process of sulfation okay these are the take home message apoptosis now have you ever imagined how how a chloro i mean how a, a golgi apparatus help in a process of apoptosis if you not then here it is the golgi has a putative role in the apoptosis process with several bcl2 family mem members localized there as well as in the mitochondria so this is arbitrary event we found out the golgi apparatus has some role but what is the exact role a newly characterized protein which is known as g a a p okay golgi anti apoptotic protein golgi anti apoptotic protein g a a p gap exclusively resides in the golgi and protects cell from apoptosis by an under undefined mechanism we don't know that but what we know is that there is a protein and if we take if we if we turn off the function of the protein if we stop the protein to function uh, there is a higher chance of apop uh, i mean higher chance of cancer cell formation okay and also i mean sorry higher chance of death not cancer lower chance of cancer and uh, higher chance of death so basically this gap protein helps in apoptosis okay protects the cell from being apoptosis sorry it protects it protects so basically it's anti it's anti apoptotic so this gap protein is anti apoptotic we don't know how it's uh, doing that but it's anti apoptotic so basically this is can be a carcino i mean this this can be a part of the gene that is coding for gap can be termed as a proto oncogene okay that means if the gap is the function of gap is amputated then what we can see is that uh, apoptosis can go normal and cancer cell formation can be inhibited but hyperactivation of gap will not allow the apoptosis to be conducted in the cell and can turn a normal cell into cancerous cell okay what else photo i mean what is phosphorylation so not photo phosphorylation the phosphorylation event is very common in golgi apparatus just like any kind of chemical modification phosphorylation is one of the like uh, most predominant uh, chemical modifications that need to be done and uh, atp is the donor for the phosphate okay and basically inside of the lumen of golgi apparatus what we have we have casein kinases okay casein kinase 1 and casein kinase 2 they both can be phosphorylated they both are phosphorylated okay one such example of phosphor uh, what is the role of phosphorylation in golgi apparatus let me tell you one of very vital uh, protein that is apolipoprotein okay apolipoprotein which forms a molecule known as vldl which is a, a constituent of blood serum and vldl helps in the transport of lipids uh, through the blood stream so apolipoprotein can be phosphorylated apolipoprotein can be phosphorylated by the by the phosphorylase enzyme that are present in the golgi apparatus via the mode of phosphorylation taking phosphate from atp and this apolipoprotein has multiple functions there are multiple functions one of the easiest function is that they are constituents of very low density lipoprotein which is a very important lipoprotein in the body to transfer lipid through the blood stream and uh, the sixth function is vesicular transport and why we keep this uh, at the end because this is a kind of the kind of predominant function 
vesicles leaving rough endoplasmic reticulum transported onto the cis phase of the Golgi apparatus. We have talked about it multiple times. We have ER and ER to cis Golgi network, uh, medial Golgi network, trans Golgi net network and cell membrane out of the cell. This is the overall scheme and this is known as the endo membrane system. So, going from endoplasmic reticulum, cis Golgi network, medial Golgi network, trans Golgi network out of the cell. So, molecules inside the lumen are modified and sorted for the transport. So, here molecule, molecules are first of all tagged and sorted. So, for example, uh, a molecule uh, need to be delivered inside mitochondria, they have a different tag, they will not go inside the Golgi apparatus like that obviously. But if it goes inside the Golgi apparatus, there are generally two things that is going to happen. One is the secretion, another one is moving into the lysosome and other components which we will study later when we discuss about the lysosomes. But they are tagged, they are modified, different chemical modifications are possible and that is done by the enzymes present in the Golgi uh, bodies and then they are destined for their locations. Proteins destined for uh, places other than endoplasmic reticulum or Golgi apparatus moves to trans phase. Okay? So, most of the proteins that are destined to be delivered, they will, they will be present in the cis phase, but if they are not destined to be delivered into the endoplasmic reticulum or Golgi apparatus, then they will go, go to the trans phase. Gets placed on either of the three vesicles exocytic vesicles, secretory vesicles or lysosomal vesicles. So, basically the fate of the components, the proteins or any other cargo that are being processed from ER through the Golgi apparatus will ultimately end up in any of these three vesicles, any of these three vesicles. One is exocytotic vesicle, second one is secretory vesicle, third one is lysosomal vesicle. Okay? If there are enzymes, hydrolytic enzymes, they will go inside lysosomal vesicles and if there are proteins or any component that need to be released outside in the exocytic vesicles or secretory vesicles. Okay? Now, if they also contain hydrolytic enzymes, okay, uh, so that can also be secreted via the exocytic component that can destroy the extracellular matrix component. Either. Cell specific functions, what are the cell specific functions done by uh, Golgi bodies? Formation of cell wall and cell plate in plant tissues, acrosomal development in sperm cells, secretion of zymogen in the exocrine cells of pancreas. Now, I, I know that these are features that you are knowing right now, so you can write it down. Acrosomal development or acrosomal reaction is very important, particularly during uh, the process of sperm fusion. We have seen that for uh, sea urchin uh, sperm fusion, sea urchin uh, fertilization. Secretion of zymogen, you know zymogen is an important enzyme, pre-enzyme which will be forming different other enzymes in pancreas is important. Secretion and transformation of lipid in the liver cell is another function and similar secretory functions are carried out in the Brunner's gland cells, alveolar epithelium, panet cells, connective tissues as well. Okay? Uh, all this, you know, secretion of lipids and all. So, protein glycosylation in the Golgi apparatus. There is something that I want to say separately because till this point we, we have discussed about the functions of Golgi apparatus and that is kind of it if you want to study for most of the uh, competitive exams. But one particular feature stands out that is the glycosylation of, of proteins and they can ask separate question from this topic that is why I listed it the glycosylation event. Protein processing within Golgi involves modification and synthesis of carbohydrate. Uh, portions of the glycoprotein. So, basically it can tag uh, carbohydrate moiety to a protein and it becomes a glycoprotein and further this carbohydrate moiety of the protein can be modified. Okay? So, basically first the carbohydrate moiety can be added, secondly the carbohydrate moiety can be modified and one such modification is glycosylation and there are these four different stages that happens in the glycosylation. Removal of three additional mannose residues sequential addition of N-acetyl glucosamine, removal of two more mannose, addition of fucose and two more N-acetyl glucosamine. So, basically if you want to summarize, if you know the summary of glycosylation of proteins in the Golgi apparatus, then these are the four stages of summary. And here is the picture showing the idea. First of all, removal of three additional mannose residue that is done. Second is the addition of N-acetyl glucosamine. Okay? N-acetyl, so this is the very first step here. Removal of three additional mannose residues done. Second a step, what? Uh, sequential addition of N-acetyl glucosamine is added. See, this is the structure, three removed, 
in acetyl glycosamine is added c removal is not shown here but the acetyl glyco uh, in acetyl glucosamine addition is shown removal of two more mannose two more mannose here from here two more mannose are removed you can see two additional mannose removed okay primarily four mannose removed from here you can see what four mannose see these two one two three and four four mannose removed here in the very first step by glycoside days then second step sequential addition of n-acetyl glucosamine blue colored added the third step removal of two more mannose so two more mannose these two mannose are removed and the fourth step addition of fucose and two more uh, n-acetyl glucosamine so addition of fucose fucose is added and two more acetyl uh, glucosamine blue colored added and that concludes the process of glycosylation the enzyme names are already listed here you can clearly see that okay that's the thing so basically removal of mannose and addition of n-acetyl glucosamine so removal of mannose is uh, mannose is done by glycosidase enzyme glycosidase is the enzyme that uh, cleaves the glycosidic structures and glycosyl transferase is the enzyme which tags n-acetyl glucosamine to the existing sugar moiety so these are the two enzymes involved in the process another uh, important function sorting and export from the golgi apparatus protein sorting and delivery golgi apparatus transport proteins via secretory pathway right involves sorting of the proteins into different kinds of transport vesicles which bud from the trans golgi network and deliver there in their distant locations in appropriate cellular destinations in this picture the sorting even can be said that this is endoplasmic reticulum you can see and these are the different vesicles different kinds of vesicles they are destined to deliver in different locations this one is delivering into the lysosome this one is delivering into the uh, exocytotic vesicle this is delivering into uh, secretory vesicles so any of that so transport from golgi place by two pathways constitutive secretory pathway or regulative secretory pathway constitutive and regulative so what happens in constitutive secretion is that the secretion is always on so basically they are secreting pro components or proteins which are uh, a result of housekeeping genes housekeeping genes make proteins which is a part of uh, you know the proteins which will be needed all the time by the cells so plasma membrane fusion you can see the newly synthesized membrane protein and this is going on regulated secretion what is different between regulated secretion and constitutive constitutive is always always on while regulative is regulated for example calcium ligand binds to the receptor upon binding of cal calcium ligand to the receptor then only internalization of sudden uh, internalization and formation of vesicle is done so once the ligand binds to the receptor then signaling and that signaling causes the formation of vesicle by taking some components inside any component that they need to take inside and they will form vesicle they will go and fuse to the cis golgi network and the process will continue like that okay constitutive secretory pathway as i mentioned earlier proteins are secreted from a cell continuously regardless of external signals or factors and here is another image showing the same idea newly synthesized proteins for constitutive secretion goes inside a vesicle the vesicle is fused to the membrane increases the length of the membrane and delivering the constitutive molecule the molecule constitutively out of the cell while the regulative secretion model i already mentioned binding of ligand to the receptor causes the signaling and as a result whatever protein can either be internalized or any molecule can be internalized or externalized it can be engulfed inside or it can be released outside both of them okay a distinct regulated secretory pathway in which specific proteins are secreted in response to environmental cues and environmental signals sorted in the trans golgi network and packed into the secretory vesicles okay so trans golgi is involved in this process more often selective transport of proteins to lysosomes the process of protein sorting in the golgi so basically we know that uh, the golgi bodies at the end will package and sort all the proteins and components and they will target it to either of the three vesicles uh, exocytic vesicles uh, endocytic exocytic vesicles that's one thing that we talk about secretory vesicles and the third one is lysosome so if a protein is targeted to be delivered into the lysosome it must carry some sort of signal some sort of uniqueness right so what what is that uh, it's a selective transport of protein remember this one is a selective transport it's not a regulative secretion or constitutive secretion it's a selective transport the proteins are modified by the mannose phosphorylation 
mannose phosphorylation in cis golgi network so write it down if a protein need to be delivered if a protein destined to be delivered inside lysosome if it destined to be delivered inside lysosome from the golgi apparatus then the proteins are modified by mannose phosphorylation in cis golgi network the phosphorylated mannose molecules are specifically recognized by the mannose 6 phosphate receptor which is present in trans golgi network so basically what happens here this is this is cis golgi and let's say this is trans golgi and uh, what's going on here is that in cis golgi network here the mannose is phosphorylated so phosphorylated mannose once reaches the trans golgi here they find receptors in the lumen of trans golgi okay which is known as mannose 6 phosphate receptor mannose 6 phosphate receptor so mannose 6 phosphate receptor is present in the trans golgi internalized receptors to, towards the lumen and in cis golgi the mannose gets phosphorylated okay so this phosphorylated form of mannose will be retained and this interaction between the mannose with mannose 6 phosphate will be there in the trans golgi and this particular interaction this particular interaction is important for delivering any protein with this mannose and phosphorylated mannose form into or any enzyme of this kind into lysosome okay this is how the lysosomal signal is actually created you can see in this picture okay lysosomal proteins and the lysosomal proteins are tagged with what tagged with n acetyl glucosamine n acetyl glucosamine is there in blue color and then mannose residues are present in the red color right and now what will happen additional acid additional phosphorylation to the mannose is done so this particular mannose here you can see gets phosphorylated blue colored moiety here is a phosphorylation event so this is phosphorylated mannose is phosphorylated so once the mannose is phosphorylated then the protein with mannose phosphorylated tag will go from cis to trans golgi where in the trans golgi they have mannose 6 phosphate receptor and this protein with mannose 6 phosphate binds to the mannose 6 phosphate receptor in the trans golgi and that acts as a signal for the uh, for for the uh, golgi body to know that this protein must be delivered into the lysosome and that's how lysosomal lysosomal delivery of protein is done by the mannose modification mannose phosphorylation in the golgi apparatus okay that's another very unique function very unique feature that's why listed so glycosylation and mannose phosphorylation are equally important functions to understand from golgi apparatus structure and function so i believe this video gives you something that you haven't prepared earlier haven't learned earlier about the golgi bodies so if you like this video about the golgi body structure and function hit the like button share this video with your friends and subscribe to this channel to get more videos like that in future thank you bye